So we hear a lot of women being told not to settle. I would definitely tell the men, do not settle. Um, I, I want to apologize for believing this lie that I can have it all, that I don't need a man, that children are a burden, that my career is more important than anything, that my bank account um, can replace a person being a husband for me. I'm so sorry that I was this feminist that media, movies, songs, uh, influencers were convincing me that I can do everything by myself and that being feminine and vulnerable was the wrong thing to do and um, that I can choose to be masculine when it's a role that I don't want, I'm not qualified for, and therefore I cannot tell men what to do. So I just want to apologize for my part in it, for believing. Emotional maturity for a man is stoicism. We feel all the emotions a woman does. We just control them. Emotions do not rule our lives, unlike a woman. Men don't reach out often. We deal with it. That's something women don't have the emotional capacity for, just like this person who chose to become a man. The ability for males to make their own decisions should excite feminists who advocate gender equality, according to theory. It's similar to a bunch of males who treat women with the same level of disdain that men are frequently shown by women. But regrettably, they opt for excellent results rather than exceptionally high accountability. The only way to ensure a high quality outcome is to acquire the heart and mentality of a man who works harder than they do and provides for them throughout his life. Men are expected to do everything for women and then even more. Now that some males have understood this and are backing off, it is tough for the women who are fighting for equality. Men will be able to tell when they are being exploited if they are told that they are required because they are expected to do far more than their share and provide women with at least half of the wealth. In spite of what women claim, if men treat women equally, more men would go their own way, which is not something that women are not happy about either. A thousand dollars or you get to spend the day with me, which are you choosing? I won't be offended. A thousand bucks. A thousand. <laughs> Rejected. So, what do you rate yourself? One to ten. Ten. Would other people agree with that? I guess so. So, what do you rate this girl? One to ten. Mm, wait, yeah. Probably like a five. Rejected. What do you rate yourself? One to ten. Um, I'll give myself a six. Six. Mm -hmm. Would other people agree with that? Yeah. What do you rate this girl? One to ten. Two point five. Rejected. It's one secret you never told your ex. That I'm a big flirt and I flirt with motherfucking everybody and his friends included. She belongs to the streets. His friends? Yep, I'm a big flirt. I just had to break up with my boyfriend because I saw him texting this girl named Madre saying that he loves her and she was saying that she would help him with his taxes this weekend. And I don't know how to help him with his taxes. <laughs> Good job, my brother. We rocking with you. I just prefer girls in literally every possible way of speaking. And... <laughs> like, what does if that I even could mean? go through life without interacting with men, that sounds like paradise. In Women simply want us to accept the bait and fight them in a staged game. Love is our battleground. Projecting vulnerability gives women power because it encourages men to step up, get engaged, and take care of them. However, as women project power more and more, males will go their own way and seek out other motivations for living in addition to defending women. Why should we still be here if women don't require our protection? Women want men to remain by their side, take care of them, and listen to their issues, but they also want men to believe that they are not dependent on them. This is something this person who changed her gender hadn't figured out, I guess. With the promise of freedom from males, Feminism has devastated the majority of Western women. Women need males more than they realize because they are unhappy at work and are turning into crazy, lonesome cat ladies, but they won't confess it as long as it is taboo to do so. In the future decades, as our culture gets more conservative, they will eventually come to recognize it. Then, rather than saying they need males because it's true, women will claim they do because it's fashionable to do so. When ladies scream out for males to assist them, a lot of men will genuinely respond and come to their aid, restoring the supposedly traditional connection. Once they appeal to men to assist them, neo-traditionalism will make a comeback. 
Then, it's likely that many men will respond to their appeals and come to assist them. In exchange, they'll receive conventional relationships, and a new variety of neo-traditionalism will manifest itself. Women will suddenly claim to care about males in this scenario, thereby forcing men back to the negotiating table. Because the men's rights movement aims to reunite men and women in a conventional relationship, there are numerous traditions within it. Feminists only want to give males those two options, since women benefit regardless of what they choose. We decide against selecting either option, because we understand that both are gynocentric, and that there is no way to win in either case. Instead, we choose to remove ourselves from the situation by walking away. The issue is that no formula predicts when males will stop talking to women and walk away. The feminists secretly know this, but they are afraid to admit it for fear of frightening away all the eager slaves they now have. Instead, they just criticize guys who go their own way, branding us as men who like other men because we aren't interested in becoming a woman's slave. They also accuse us of being misogynists in the hope that by doing so, we would all lose our ability to interact with women. They want us to worry about losing our ability to have access to their intimate selves. They despise us additionally because we truly inform other males about the realities of modern life. They want us to cease spreading the information about the hidden Yaya Pants sisterhood, but they can't say it out loud for fear of offending us. So, instead of doing their dirty job themselves, they hire men's rights advocates and other handy blue pill fools. However, it's backfiring because the men's rights movement has mostly turned into a site where guys learn about the problems that men face in our society, and then they just go on to Megtow. They are superior because we must play the game and follow their rules. They want subjects, but we've chosen to go into exile. The influential men will eventually leave the nations where they are valued if feminists continue to ruin our cultures by importing sizable conservative populations. Guys who prefer to act independently tend to stay away from women and refrain from playing. Instead, we decide to stay in the grubby liberal cities. As a result, we accumulate more wealth and alienate the women who are disillusioned when they see what they are unable to acquire. It makes one think that women really don't understand the concept of equality, even though they're the ones who are promoting it and talking about it all the time. They want selective equality, where they get to select the metrics that should be used to analyze them, and then select the ones used to analyze and judge men. It's funny that women don't feel that men are special in any way, until all of a sudden, they have the disadvantages and the loneliness and the struggle and the rough times that men face. Now we need to do more for men, but when men who have had men all their lives say, hey, why are laws only one way? Why is it okay not to hire me, but it's okay to hire women, or, you know, other demographics other than me? When we say something like that, no one listens to the men, and then the only thing left for men to do is to survive through it and make the most of what life has to offer. This is because for men, Nothing is ever handed out on a plate as it is for women. That's the reality of people like these, who change their own genders because of some ideology they might have come to regret as they face it. When it comes to hormone levels and how we interact with one another intimately, men and women are extremely different from each other's points of view. And all the research and data show that women who have a history of promiscuity find it difficult to develop good, long-term monogamous ties with males. If you're a woman watching this, and you're hoping to meet a good guy to have a family with. Don't be a garden tool, and don't go tossing it about to every person who shows you some attention. That's simply the reality. Men and women are designed for different things. A woman can only try to be masculine, but it will backfire on her in the long term. Also, women make their decisions on their emotions, which doesn't allow them to work in unfavorable conditions. This is why you won't see female sewerage workers or female construction workers on top of buildings. If you're a woman and you want to maintain your attractiveness, make sure your notch isn't something that would raise most eyebrows. That is simply the way things are. And you know that no amount of fighting, finger pointing or shouting can ever change that. It will always be that way. Since there is a 100% probability that she won't be truthful if you ask her, many males ask how you calculate the notch count. One of two things will happen if you question a woman about her notch count. Either she will lie or she will understate it. Simple. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.